Baruchim Abayim, and welcome to Torah Talks. Chazak spoke with a special guest. We have with us Rabbi Moshe Chaim Yid Shlita, all the way from Israel. Shalom and Baracha. The Holy Land from Israel, Baruch Haba. It's a big honor. Thank you very much for joining us, Rabbi. It's so nice to be here. Ah. Todah about everything that Chazak does is very, very special and is helping the Jewish people in tremendous ways. It's a very big zechut to be part of this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi, for joining us and for coming. And uh, we're going to be speaking about the coming of Mashiach, which is... Uh, Should be Hayom. Hashem. Bezat Hashem. Bezat But before we get to the topic, the Rabbi can give a little bit of a background of, the, of yourself and the great work you're involved with. Chaz de Hashem, I grew up um, to reform Jewish family in uh, Toronto. I went to uh, temple a couple times a year, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur which was probably the most uh, challenging days to go because it's very, very long and one of the days you don't even eat. <laughs> and uh, I began a journey coming back to Torah and to mitzvahs. I felt a little bit like an Avram Avinu, just searching and searching. Where are, where are the truths of this world? Where is the truth of this world? And that brought me back to, to the old city. I went on a birthright trip. It's just went on a birthright trip. And that trip was a very, very special trip. It was geared mostly towards go to Israel and party as much as you possibly can <laughs> and play ping pong on the beach. And, uh, and then what happened is that at the end of my trip, to make a very long story short, that maybe we could spend eight or nine hours and go more into the details, but I was at the hotel and I was, I was calling out for truth. I was looking for what is it all about? And I got a tap on the shoulder and I looked behind me and I saw a very religious looking person. And when I looked at that person, he looked at me and he said, are you Jewish? So I said, yes, of course. So he said, you should go to yeshiva. So I said, what's yeshiva? Uh -huh. So he said, let me take you. And he took me to the heritage house, which was a, a hostel in the old city. And then at that hostel, they basically kick you out in the morning because what are you going to do? Just hang out in the hostel all day? So somebody came that morning and said, why don't we take you for breakfast, have a free breakfast? Of course, the breakfast was in Eishat Torah. Wow. And in Eishat Torah, after breakfast, they say, you can't hang out all day, just go, maybe come to a class. So I came to learn a class, and I realized that I started learning wisdom that was in the Torah that I never knew existed. I never knew that, that the Jewish thought had such profound concepts. I thought everything was outdated. I thought the rabbis were outdated. I thought that I didn't know. And then I came and I saw that there was so much beauty in our own heritage. And basically came to Yishav Torah, met Rav Noach Weinberg. Oh, I was at top wow. Zechat Tzadavi Kaddish Livracha. And he lit a fire inside of my neshama that we have to go and help our brothers and sisters. That's why I'm so thankful to Chazak for carrying this big torch. And we're all one big family in this to go and if a father has children and the children have gone astray or the father not give all of his resources he'll give everything that he has to help bring the children home so Rav Noach lived with that fire and today we have our great Rosh Hashiva Rabbi Yitzhak Berkowitz who is carrying on that fire and I feel an honor to be part of the Shiva. I feel an honor to, to work every single day with, with Nishamot with Jewish souls I feel an honor that anybody who comes into our doors to be able to, to speak to them, to, to share the words of Torah, and to help everybody know that you're part of Jewish destiny. It's amazing and inspiring. So you started Aisha Torah as a student, and today, Baruch Hashem, you give us back to the students that are coming. Amazing inspiration. And uh, wow, amazing. <laughs> Rabbi, so uh, the topic of Mashiach. Um, Everyone's so interested in it, and it's, uh, you know, Baruch Hashem, people are always talking about it. What's Pshat, what's the reason that there's such a big interest in the topic? What, what, what would the rabbi say? We only know what's going to be when the Shia comes. We don't know all the details. People are interested in Mashiach because they know there's hope. Mashiach means that there's going to be a time that we're going to see peace in the world. There's going to come a time that we're going to see that... Hashem is real. Hashem was doing everything for our benefit. And it was hard for us to see that when we were in the challenge of this world and we're going through the process. But in the end, we're going to see that there was a great meaning behind everything. 
that one of the famous concepts that always reminds me of the messianic uh, experience is the Ramban had a student, the great, great rabbi, and he had a student and it was in the times of the Spanish Inquisition and there was a lot of pain happening to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people have been through a lot of pain over our journey. And the Ramban asked that when you go up to Shamayim, when you go up to heaven, please come back down to me and tell me why these things are happening, why the challenges that our communities are going through, why the Jewish people are going through challenges. Please come and give me insight into those things. So the student passed away and a long time went before he came back to his teacher. Finally, he came in a dream that could be proven through means of, of understanding the way that we can do communication in dreams. And he came to him in this dream and he said, he said, why did it take you so long? So he said, I have to tell you, where you are in this world, there's no answers to the questions. But where I am up here, there's no more questions. Everything makes sense. The time of Mashiach, we're going to see that all of our questions and all of our all of the difficulties are going to fall away. We're going to see that everything had a master plan. People are drawn to knowing how everything makes sense. They want to know how, how all the challenges they went through ultimately led them to something great. Everyone's obsessed with this. Everyone is into this. Everyone's thinking about this. All the nations of the world, everyone has a story of that there's going to be this end. And... The Torah, we have an unbroken chain, an unbroken misorah of, of tradition passed down, ish mi pi ish, from the mouth of the rabbi to the student, speaking about the excitement and speaking about some of the qualities and experiences that we'll have. And it's going to be a time of absolute peace and goodness. Bliss. Amazing. It should, like it should be Hayom. It should be Hayom, yes, 100%. Which for, for the Jew, if somebody asks us, when is Mashiach coming? We have to say today. <laughs> that is the answer. That is the Jewish answer. Today. It should be right now. So we have to think like this. It's, I, I'm going to say it's not a nice... It's, they, some say it's a joke. Some say it's a challenge. But I'll say that they say a famous joke, I heard it from Rav Nassim Weiss, from Esha Torah. So he said that Mashiach came. He came into a certain community. He didn't want to say which community, he came to a certain community outside of the land of Israel. And he came to the community and he said, It's me! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> pack your flight, you know, pack your bags, we're, we're going! And get on the wings of, the wings of eagles, Ella, let's, let's go to Eretz Yisrael. So what happened? No, everyone said like, um, you know, <laughs> Can you give us an hour? To, uh, I'm Mashiach. We're, we're go, we're going to the, what do you mean? We're going. They said, um, give us an hour. We're going to meet together. So Mashiach, okay. He, I guess he opened the Gemara, waited, and comes back. They all said, okay, we agreed that we're not going to go. But we'll send money. <laughs> so we want Mashiach to come. But maybe today what we can go into is getting deeply into the fact that we really want it. Mm. We, we, we deeply, deeply want, and we want a world of transformation. We want a world of peace. And that's really what we want. Reb Neuch Weinberg used to always say, what do you want more? Pleasure? Or what the opposite was? So people would usually say pain. He said, it's not the opposite. He said comfort. Pleasure or comfort? Pleasure can sometimes be painful. You have to change. You have to transform. You have to, you have to dig deep. But it's going to be the ultimate pleasure. Yeah. Comfort is the thing that we have, oftentimes have to push the comfort zone. And Mashiach coming is going to force us to just push a little bit more. Amazing. Very powerful, Rabbi. Uh, we know that there are signs for the coming of Mashiach <laughs> that Rabbi could share uh, with us. The Gemara talks about many, many different things. And what do we know? The Gemara says there's going to be inflation. The Gemara says that there's going to be uh, chutzpah yaske, that there's going to be people uh, chutzpah. Yeah, it's, it's an English word. Right? Oh, it's an English word. <laughs> I don't even think we need, there's no translation. Chutzpah, <laughs> that people are going to be very chutzpahdik. And there's going to be things that are, are, are happening. We're going to see, um, we're going to see signs which 
when people look out in the world, they see, they see things happening. They feel like it says that the Pnei Hador is ke Pnei HaKelev. That in, in the generation before Mashiach, things are going to look like, like a dog. And it, there's a lot of understanding of what this means. A dog is a funny thing, so there's many, many explanations, but what does it mean the generation is going to look like a dog? So it could be one, there's going to be a lot of dogs. Very. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, more dogs than, than people. <laughs> and there's going to be Pneha Dork, Pneha Hakelev, is that a dog is an interesting thing. The dog is funny because the dog will oftentimes run in front of his master. Right. So the dog is running in front of the master, and the, the master is holding on to the leash. And if you didn't know, you would think that the dog is the one that's leading the master. So, but really, it's the opposite. The, the man has the dog, but the dog is, but as soon as the, 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 the person goes, the dog will just skirt back. So, one of the signs is, is that maybe people will be, it look like they're in the front, it looked like they'll be leading, but really they're just going to be subservient to other forces. In short, the lead up to Mashiach is going to force us to become very real with certain values, become very real with, with, yes, there'll be inflation, that's what it says. So how am I going to, to when there's challenges financially, what am I holding on to? What values am I holding on? What am I going to be grabbing when other things start to become a bit, uh, a bit challenged? The coming of Mashiach is going to squeeze us a little bit. And it's going to be what's called a birur. There's going to be a certain amount of, of selecting. And what that means is that inside of me, I'm going to be pushed to select what are my real values and what are the things that are not my real values? I, I was speaking to somebody yesterday, and somebody very well off to do person. And I said, Rinoich would always ask, What would you rather be, happy or rich? So they all said, You know, obviously happy. So then well, one of the kids was like, uh, And the mother was like, I think he's going to say uh, rich. He said, You know, rich is it's very, very good. But I said, Would you rather be on a giant yacht, a Rolls Royce yacht, but you're grumpy? and you're on this side of the yacht, and, and someone's on this side of the yacht, and not really talking, do you really even enjoy those things? So I said, so why do we spend all our life chasing? Why don't we spend our life chasing the happiness, learning Torah, learning the things that'll make us deeply, deeply happy? You can have the wealth, but what happens in a time where there is inflation, there is challenges, and the whole lead up to Mashiach will be what is really what I'm looking for? Bezalat Hashem, everyone should be very financially abundant, very, a tremendous blessing. It says in the end of days that all of the wealth, things are going to come back to their rightful owners. That when we left Mitzrayim, we took all the wealth out of Mitzrayim. It was like a Mitzulah She'em Dagim. We just pulled all of the wealth. And then on Ayam, we pulled all the wealth. And all of that wealth was, was accumulated by Yosef HaTzadik. And Yosef HaTzadik had all the wealth of the world because the famine, they all brought the wealth to Mitzrayim, and the Jewish people had 210 years of unpaid wages that we were due, and we were able to reclaim that. So we want to take that wealth and want to use it for holy things, use it to build base medishes, use it to build more Torah, use it to build more kolalim, use it to build more awareness of Hashem in the world. When I was speaking to the Roshiva at Berkowitz, the Bitzah Berkowitz Shlita, and I said that I'm going to be speaking with people in the States, and he just said, just talk about Hashem. Hmm. Just talk about Hashem. Hashem is in the family. Hashem is part of the family. We want to use our money, anything we could do to make Hashem a household name, to make Hashem good PR in this world. Hmm. Hashem. That's where all the money needs to be taken to. So in the times right before Mashiach, we're going to see Hashem is going to give us challenges. What's the real values that we have? Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem. Wow, so inspiring, Rabbi. So beautiful. Uh, what are some practical steps we can take to prepare for the coming of the Gul of the Redemption, Mashiach of the Messiah? <laughs> these are such uh, these are such beautiful things. Uh, is we want to be around good people. We want to be around good people. When you spend time around inspirational people, you feel lifted up. I was speaking to a certain Rav in Shar Yashiv, the Shabbos. We had an Ufros there. And he said a beautiful thing. He said, 
were so influenced by our surroundings. He was speaking about how, how Shevet Ruvain got pulled into Korach's rebellion, even though they had nothing to gain from it. They were pulled in because they were in proximity mm -hmm. to Shevet to Shevet Ruvain. They were pulled in, and therefore be very careful to be around positive people. He said, take the five people that you spend the most time around, their midot, their dreams, their aspirations, so to speak, divide it all up by five. That's basically who you are. Adam nimshach achas fivoisa. The person is so much pulled after his environment. Surroundings, 100%. And therefore, choose people that will lift you up. Choose people that'll make you feel good about yourself. I suggest to people, try to make what's called a life chavruta. A life friend He's not your rabbi. He's not a mentor. He's just a friend that you could have very emotional, honest conversation with. Somebody that you respect. And the two of you could talk about life. You could talk about challenges. It's very important to have good friends that are, that are good role models that you could talk about. So, so far, we have two things. Number one, in general, be around good people. Surround yourself around very good people. And number two, have somebody like a life chavruta that you just can emotionally talk the th things out. Because a lot of times things get kind of built up. And if we're getting ready for this great days ahead, we, we want to work through the stuff now. We don't want to work through it later. When you have somebody that you could talk to and you could have real honest conversation, it, it's very healing. It opens a person up. They do inner work that they need to do. Another tip I would say is make sure to have set learning times for Torah. Koveya itim la Torah. And no matter how busy a person is, it's one of the first questions they ask us in Shamaim. We should all live long life. Bezrat Hashem Amen. But it's something that we need to know down here. No matter how busy we are, we have to make set learning times. Kavata itim also means to steal times. We have to steal times. Everyone's busy. You gotta just take away some uh, Everyone's busy. They said one time, Ramosha Feinstein, he was making a siyam ashas. So they asked him about the siyam. They said, you know, when was this? He said, this is a siyam that on shas that I made in two minutes. Siyam ashas on two minutes? Shas is so big. How do you make a siyam on two minutes? So he said, this is my siyam on shas. That every time that I had two minutes, somebody was running a bit late, or I was going to run the chupa and something was, I was waiting for somebody. I had these two extra minutes. I had a special gemara that I would only learn during these two minutes. All the two minutes added up. And now I'm making a siyum on all of the Torah from those two men. Look what we can accomplish in the little times of the day. Here's another thing. Sometimes I do with people, this sometimes strikes a chord. As I do, I call, I want to look at people's phone and the screen time. Screen time is a little app where you could see what people do. So I open it up and I say, did you know that you spent three and a half hours watching movies a day? I said, I, I didn't know that it was that much. So sometimes a practical tip is just take a look at what I'm doing with my time and sit down and think, could I use my time more wisely? Nobody has a Motsi Shabbat, a Saturday night, and they think, I want to have a successful week. I want to have a good week where I'm growing and my me daughter growing and I feel like a productive person in the world. And you know what I think I'm going to do on Tuesday night? I'm going to binge six hours of Netflix. You don't usually see that a person thought that. What happened was it just, they lost themselves in it. So a person should take an accounting. How can I use my time wisely? It's a very, very good uh, tip uh, to get ready. It might not seem like uh, such a, a tip that people might think, but eat healthy. Mm. Eat healthy. Mm. Do the things that make you feel balanced. When you feel healthy, you're in a better mood. You're nicer to people. You feel warm. You feel with it. Try to eat healthy. I'm all into kugel and chulant. I think it's also a health food. As long as a person also has a balanced food, you'll feel good. The Torah wants us to feel good. Go to the gym, work out. Make sure you feel good about yourself. It's very, very important that when you feel good, that you can be in a healthy state to get ready for great things that are coming. The Chavetz Chaim had a son that he did. He would, a lot, he spoke of Mashiach towards the end of his life. He, when he was like very, very old, even sometimes like fall asleep in the middle of talking, and that he, they'd wake him with Mashiach's here, the machine here. Because he was mamish living with it. So it's famously known that he had a, a suitcase under his bed where he had all his clothing. 
Ready to go. Ready to go. So I tell people, if Mashiach came today, what would you wear? Just <laughs> think about it. I mean, you don't need a suitcase. Maybe you want that. That's your Shabbos dress or that's your Shabbos suit. But what would you wear? What would you wear, Lamaisa? Think about it in, in a practical way. Like, there was a certain tzaddik I heard from Rav Tzimar Zilberberg that he had a special bottle of wine that he put aside, the fanciest bottle that he could afford, and he put it in his, in the, his, uh, his farm shrunk, his, his bookcase, that whenever Mashiach comes, he'll make a l'chaim with this. So it sits there. So I did the same thing. Uh-huh. And it just sits there. I wrote on it. This is, you know, l'chavid Mashiach. We'll make a l'chaim with Mashiach when he comes. It, it, and I just look at it. And my wife looks at it. And my kid look at it. And when I first got it, they said, you know, why aren't you bringing that bottle out? I said, this bottle is going to be when Mashiach comes. Bezrat Hashem. You want this to be like something in the home that people are thinking about. That it's... It's not, this is not a dream. This is very concrete reality that there's going to come a time and this is going to happen and we want to make it as real as possible. So another tip I would say is that the Gemara says that one of the questions that they ask you is were you anticipating Mashiach? Yeah, Yeshua. Yeshua. Were you anticipating Mashiach coming? So anticipating doesn't mean like I was waiting at a bus stop waiting for the bus to come. It means I was really imagining Mashiach. I was thinking about all the details. So I tell people, think about, think about all the people you know. Maybe people that are far away. Maybe sadly those that have, have gone away from Torah. Or maybe they, ne- they never knew Torah. Picture them with you putting on tefillin. Picture them coming to learn Torah. Picture learning Mishnayot. And this is not only for the Jews, this is for all humanity. I tell people, picture LeBron James giving you a call and saying, say, Meshachai, Maybe you'll teach me a couple of Mishnayis, a little bit of Chumash Rashi. He's going to be begging. He's going to want so badly. He says to the king, but he's going to know that there's only one Melech, the Melech al Kola Aretz, to start thinking about these things and make it ve- this is going to happen. This is concrete. So these are important tips to live with this in a very practical way and to talk about it, to make it something that the kids are excited about, that they know that a great time is coming. There's going to be peace in the world. There's going to be the chiyat ha-metim. There's going to be... The of the death. Which means if somebody has loved ones, that you can, you can know that you're going to see them again. That's so important is, is, to, to speak that way, to, to know that Jewish destiny is, is so real, is that we're part of this great story. And we're all in this together. It's all, we're all one mishpacha. Yes. It's all one mishpacha. And... We're all in this together, and the more that we feel that we're in this together, and it's a long story, and that there's going to come a great time that we're going to be reunited with loved ones, and there's going to be peace in the world, and it's going to happen right here. It, it makes it more real to you. It makes it very, very real. You start living with the eyes of Mashiach. So you already start living with this consciousness of having peace, and seeing everyone's going to see the good in each other. Imagine a world, no more Lashon Allah. Oh. No more Lashon How good is that? Everyone is just complimenting each other, saying nice things to each other. Everyone's helping each other out. Bezrat Hashem, this is what we want. Hayom. In the call of Tushmo. We have to, as long as we do what Hashem wants, Mashiach will come. Bezrat Hashem. Rabbi Moshe Chaim, he divine my yaitim in the living the chazan and things that come out of the heart enter the heart. I feel the inspiration, I feel the chizuk, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we have a custom, I mean, again, our Torah Talks podcast is a, a final message. So many beautiful gems that Rabbi has shared with us so far. We could ask for one last one. A final message. Hashem is more real than anything in this world. Hashem is reality. A lot of people who say, you know, I don't know about Torah or Judaism or this. I don't know, like if it's for me, or I'm too busy, or this. So the great rabbi, Rabbi Nachman, he spent a lot of time towards the end of his life speaking with people who weren't such believers in Hashem. And he would oftentimes speak to them, shmuz, and he would say to them, you know, by the way, I don't believe in God. Excuse me, rabbi, (laughs) I knew it, I knew I was right, I knew it. He would say, you, you know, the same God that you don't believe in, I also don't believe in Him either. 
the same one that you guys don't believe in, I also don't believe in him. Let me tell you about the God, though, that I do believe in. So I think there's a lot of people that they never experienced what Torah is. Come, come, come in Chazak. You're doing so many good things. Come, there's so much opportunity to have beautiful connection to authentic Torah. There's come and meet people that are living with Torah in wonderful ways. There's so much here. There's a gold mine. There's a gold mine. Hashem made the world for our good. And even if somebody thinks, but I don't see it right now, we're still in the middle of the story. There was a mashal that I one time heard when I was in the beginning of my journey, and it made a big roshem. It, it really, it went into my big heart. Effect. A big effect. And it was, somebody heard behind a door that there was like a lot of yelling, and it was very tumultuous. And he looked through the keyhole, and he saw that somebody had a knife. And it was very, very disturbing. And he saw that somebody was being cut and there was blood. And he kicks down the door and he, he runs into the room. And he, he, he's met with bright lights. And he wanted to go save the person. But he realized that he was in an operation theater. And there was a surgeon. And he was just saving the person's life doing open heart surgery. Even though from his perspective it looked like this was so bad. But when he saw the bigger story, he saw that there was a plan. Hashem has a plan. And the more that a person comes to Torah, the more that a person comes to, to learn and he will see, he will feel more of that plan. You'll feel that Hashem, so to speak, peels back the curtain and you could see more into the master plan that Hashem has in store. You could already, so to speak, taste a little bit of the Yemosa Mashiach. A person even now can feel that even now we're, we're bringing Yemosa Mashiach here. That's why the big tzaddikim, they're already living in that consciousness. They had a famous story that somebody was, there's a Rebbe and he was in his, in his, in, uh, in his study and, and he was, and somebody came in and they, they, they said like, like Mashiach is here. He said, Mashiach is here, it's Mashiach. So he went and he, and he opened up the window of, of his room and, and he, looked, he smelled outside and he said, I don't, I don't smell the reach, everything about Mashiach, about reach, I don't smell the reach, the, the great the great scent, I, I don't think that he's here. He says, Rebbe, but what do you mean? I, I, I feel it right here. He said, you're right, in my room. Mm -hmm. I had to open the window to see if outside, if it was also outside as well. He said, Bezrat Hashem, reach out to people. Another message, reach out to people. If a person knows somebody who could use some chizuk, could feel part of a, of, a, of, a, of a strong future of the Jewish people, reach out to them, say a good word to them. You never know. I was tapped on the shoulder by Rav Schuster Zetzal. My whole destiny was changed. Everything has changed. You never know. Wow. One little thing. You see somebody in, in, in Queens somewhere, just mm -hmm. say a nice thing. See if they can come for Shabbat. There's, there's so many things that we could do. And the more that we just unify Klal Yisrael to do a mitzvah, to talk about Hashem, we're going to see that we're going to make everything much more speedy. Like it says, Ani Hashem Be'ito Achishena, that Mashiach will come in its time, but you can also speed it up because we're partners. We're partners with Hashem in this. Bezrat Hashem, everything that you're doing and the work of Chazak is, is, is making this more concrete that it should happen very, very soon. Klal is so thankful for everything that Chazak is doing. It's such a pleasure to be here. We should, we should take this message, I'm talking to myself, and, and carry it out and feel that love for our feather, fellow brothers and sisters. Bezrat Hashem, we should be zorcha hayom. Hayom. That Meshit Zidkeinu should come. Amen. We should make our way home, all of Klal Yisrael, to Yerushalayim, Yerak Kodesh, to build the Binyan, Tifarteinu, the Beis HaMikdash, should be Meherev, Amen, Amen, Amen. Meherev, Amen, Chazak, Rokh, Yishakach, Rabbi Moshe, Chazak, Rabbi Moshe, with the powerful words of inspiration, the coming with Sheikh and Shekam, Bezat Shem, Hayom, today, Bezat Hashem. And we want to thank all of our friends uh, that are hosting our podcast, the many different platforms, and uh, shout out to Torah Anytime and to Daily Giving, a dollar a day goes a very far away. And the entire team of here at Chazak, with a special shout out to Mayor Markov for making the shit of the connection with the rabbi. And uh, every single Tuesday night, Chazak Torah Talks with special guests at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Reach out to Chazak for future programming and suggestions of Rabbanim and speakers in Mechanach and Gedon. And uh, info at CHNZAQ, info at Chazak, the Oregon. Dedication is also available. Please reach out to Chazak. Once again, thank you very much, Rabbi. Thank you, Rome. Thank you so much. Amen.